Hello and welcome back to Pictorial on Relay FM. I'm Quinn Rose. I am someone who did not go to art school, but I love learning about art and art museums. And increasingly on this show, we are here to call out art museums. So hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Betty. I'm also someone who didn't go to art school, but I have been working at an art museum for the last eight years. And I um, also think I have been calling out a lot of art museums, but you know, uh, they can take it. So this is actually part two of a two-part series on the works of Jean-Michel Basquiat and specifically an exhibit that was done at the Guggenheim curated by Chadria Labouvier. So if you've not listened to part one, which focused on Basquiat and the exhibit itself, you should go do that now and you can come back and listen to part two, which is going to talk more specifically about Labouvier and her experiences at the Guggenheim. So to sort of set the stage with this, Labouvier, uh, has actually been researching Basquiat since she was 18 years old. Um, She's now 34, which, by the way, is so young to be this accomplished, and I'm very impressed by her. Mm. Um, And she's (laughs) considered, like, a leading scholar on Basquiat and has done incredible work um, sort of throughout this whole, like, decade and a half, studying him, um, bringing his works into new contexts, both, uh, like, starting in school and, like, leading all through her professional life so far. So in 2016, um, she did a show at the Williams College Museum of Art uh, about Basquiat um, and his work, which also, by the way, she went to college at Williams. And in 2016, I believe in sort of conjunction uh, with this show that she curated, she uh, spoke on a well, she moderated and kind of led a panel on Basquiat and specifically about defacement, uh, which will be linked in the show notes. It's super interesting. There are two other Basquiat scholars uh, talking with her and the crowd has like the least strong grip on the idea of a question, not a comment I've maybe ever seen. <laughs> but be- the actual like speakers themselves are very, very interesting. So if you want greater insight into to Basquiat and his work, like definitely watch that. And I'll skip the comment section, <laughs> the, the quest Q&A section yeah. when I watch that then. <laughs> Just skip to when they answer. Um, anyway, uh, closing those parentheses sidebars back to <laughs> her timeline. So in 2016, yes, she does the show at the Williams College Museum of Art. And uh, this is how she kind of got a little bit more attention out of the New York art world, which of course is a big center of art, including by a woman named Nancy Spector, who is the artistic director and chief curator at the Guggenheim in New York City. Le Bouvier actually said that she was primarily interested in taking the show to black museums and universities, but uh, she basically didn't get it picked up there anywhere um and specter was very interested in bringing the show to the guggenheim so she said okay like you guys want the work like i want to bring the work where the work wants to be seen so i will work with you and of course you know it's the guggenheim and uh the backdrop to all of this is she said that she definitely knew going in is that the Guggenheim has done very little work in exhibiting black artists and working with black curators. So she knew that they had problems in the past um, and they were talking extensively about wanting to correct these problems and to, to lead a better way forward. And her exhibit was going to be, I guess, one of the beginning attempts to kind of write this path and to make sure that they were representing all kinds of different artists and other people working in the art world, like curators um, to their full extent and not just centering white artists. So definitely keep that in mind as we talk about sort of her experiences a little later. But um, this is in 2018 and she starts working with the Guggenheim to bring a full Basquiat exhibit uh, to this museum. Yeah, like as you said, the Guggenheim does not have a very big or uh, even small history of featuring black artists or even inviting black curators into their um, staff. So there, um, she was the first black curator in Guggenheim's 80-year history, not just black female curator. Um, however, there was a curator who was a co-curator of a 1996 photography exhibition. His name was, uh, I apologize, um, Okwi M. Uh, and so in any case, because he was a co-curator, he wasn't like the only curator, you know, technically she was the first. They called her solo curator, which was a really like weird way of putting it uh, because you would never really like call somebody that. You would just say the curator or co-curators if there are more than one. And maybe uh, the Guggenheim was just trying to highlight that this is like the first time a black person is exclusively curating 
um, a show, uh, you know, which is fine. But it's also like, you know, could can you just call her a curator? <laughs> yeah, that's there are going to be lots of different things in, in this story that we're telling right now that are like on their own are like, that's a little weird, but not necessarily like a, a horrible offense. But when and some of them are more some of them are definitely more offensive than others but like there's a lot there's also just like a lot of little things that you're like why are you doing this and they start adding up and you start seeing the pattern that's like oh yeah like obviously if this was one thing or one of the few things you might think oh like why are they being so picky about like small stuff but it's like yeah it's definitely not the only weird <laughs> to use that term uh you know thing that has that occurred during this um but anyway yeah so it is yeah it is good to sort of know like the backstory of like how um you know the it is a very rare occurrence for black artists or black curators to be working in the Guggenheim or be featured but you know obviously that's not just a Guggenheim problem that's a every museum or gallery or institution in North America problem and um the effort to try to be more inclusive is um i think appreciated by most people if not everyone who is not racist (laughs) um so uh yeah like i think as institutions around the world and around especially like canada and the u.s um are at least like actively trying to uh review their collection and their um staff to just see you know is it possible that we can include a bit uh you know some other voices like i think that's you know that's definitely not something that's a problem and uh I, I definitely initially Le Bouvier was very excited to work with the Guggenheim and it would appear like she, she tweeted about it and um when she started working on it and yeah just the idea of being able to get her show uh to a bigger audience in general is something that she definitely was like very interested in yeah absolutely and so I mean things start out looking good um and looking like an example of positive progress and then there are these little weird things that start cropping up like the solo curator kind of language note that was like why are you why are you making this title that isn't a, a, sort of an industry standard title that seems kind of weird um and then she started talking more um sort of near the end of the exhibits run at the Guggenheim about her experiences there and it kind of seems like there are two primary kind of categories of things that happened when it's sort of in the creation of the ex- exhibition she talks extensively about her experiences with nancy specter um, who was the person who scouted her exhibit in the first place uh, le bouvier said one of the essential facts of this whole thing is that she did not give up her copyright over her work and she retained her copyright rather than sell it or sign it over in any way um, which means that like she has fundamental power over her work and her exhibit and also supposed to have fundamental control over it and she detailed there'll be a couple different threads that are linked in the description but in one particular thread that she wrote on june 3rd she went pretty far in detail on talking about the way that she as she put it nancy specter was trying to co-opt her work um they were sending out loan letters to request for uh, different pieces that did not accurately represent Le Bouvier's um, involvement in to this exhibit, which actually, she said, made it more difficult to get pieces because um, the people who owned the paintings weren't seeing, like, the personal scholarship that had gone into the exhibit. They were just seeing sort of, like, this broader idea of the Guggenheim rather than her as, like, a leading Basquiat scholar, which obviously was, like, very important to this. There were different points in which, like, she was not given access to things that she needed or, like, stuff that she wanted to happen in the exhibits. Like, she wanted to have extended captions that explained the work and, like, why they were chosen and those were not allowed to be put into the exhibition, which I, on a personal note, um, I hate it when there's not, like, full explanations of it because I want (laughs) to know what the work is in context. And so, like, uh. (laughs) Yeah, that, that, like, just on that specific note, that is, like, a weird, like, art gallery thing um like so many curators or interpretive planners who generally are the people kind of sort of in charge of like doing those captions um like under the guide of the curator um don't like to explain like they they really like bare walls and like just a title and not everyone's like this like certain um galleries and certain interpretive planners and curators are definitely um 
more okay and more interested in uh, giving more information and backstory and context, which almost all viewers universally like. But yeah, like there's just, it's like a weird thing where certain institutions are so like, oh, we want the work to speak for itself. And it's like, yeah, sure. Like some cases, yes. And, and um, maybe if, you know, it, that's kind of a super open to interpretation type of work, sure. But so many artworks, like, it's just so much better to, like, have, um, uh, like, context. Although the caveat to this is, I guess if every single piece of work had, like, extensive descriptions, I wouldn't have a job. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's literally what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to walk around and tell people, this is what this is about, or this is the backstory, and this is something else you can think about. Um, so maybe, I don't know, I guess maybe the curator or the institutions will look, was looking out for the gallery guys, but I doubt that's the reason. <laughs> that's really funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and I mean, like, on a personal level, I think that all exhibits should have these. And then on sort of a moral level, like, obviously, it should be up to the curator one way or another. It's just like extra, I'm just extra personally um, mad on her behalf, because she it's also like a position that I agree with. <laughs> Um, (laughs) and even at this point it's unclear whether or not she would have even publicly spoken out about these experiences and these real difficulties in working with the Guggenheim especially with Nancy Spector specifically um, until the treatment that she got when the exhibit was actually running Um, she did some interviews and she talked extensively about the work and how proud she was of the exhibit that she was able to make but after everything happened she gave lots of examples of her being shut out from the presentation of her own work um she had a journalist that like confirmed and she has a screenshot confirming that uh journalists were being told that she was unavailable for press even though she absolutely was um so she was being Mm -hmm. shut out of being able to talk about her own work and then the kind of culmination of all of this and the first time that she really went public with everything was a panel that happened in early November, uh, sort of right at the culmination of this exhibit. So the panel was not exactly specifically on her exhibition, but it was like on the topics of her exhibit at the same time as her exhibit and like obviously like very drawn on her scholarship and on the exhibit itself and she was not invited to it. Yeah, it, it it just it just seems like there there was a very abnormal level of like not letting her participate and not letting her speak especially to um, journalists and other media I think I read uh, one specific um, black publication I think it's like a either a magazine or a newspaper uh, or like a art review type of publication that said like you know they they tried to contact her but they they were told the same thing that she's not available but then later um, when they did get to speak with Le Bouvier after the show had like ended she was like no I was totally available and they they just prevented me from speaking to uh, media especially she said like uh, black run media which was like you know obviously really weird um because of course a lot of black publications would be super interested in this show and would want her comment like why would you write this whole article and not get any feedback from the curators so um yeah so like there's there's just there was so much um like blocking of her participation and and generally yeah like no kind of you know working on the inside of like a lot of museum shows like the curator is like quite often like front and center and you see them participate in a lot of things like the only reason they wouldn't be around a lot is if they had like if they were like sick or something or or had like a personal problem but the thing is like there were also other things that were um, done without her knowledge or input like they put together a Spotify playlist for the show but like she didn't even know about it like obviously the curator doesn't have to do every single thing like there's other people who work on the show like she's not like literally the she didn't put up the paintings herself um not to say that like other people can't do stuff but I think the the fact that she wasn't even aware of these um like media and things that were uh put 
in this show um is like really weird like she found out like after it was posted online and is like uh what and uh, again like i think because of the relationship between basquiat and uh, music like hip-hop and jazz and and how relevant it was to the new york scene in the 80s like it, it would have been very important <laughs> for the curator to have at least some say in the spotify playlist so yeah so like that that's just really weird um and yeah there were other things like a digital guide and digital products that like she was also not asked to participate in also on that note that you mentioned a minute ago about you know she didn't physically hang up the paintings um which you know yeah um but one of the other specific transgressions that she names was actually that she was not included in the de-installation process which is an industry standard like just a it's incredibly odd that she wasn't um, included in this. Uh, And I don't know enough about de-installation processes to know why this is so important. Um, But Mm -hmm. it's not even that like some curators uh, do this and she was not invited for that kind of thing. But like, she's like, no, it's like all curators preside over the de-installation process. But for some reason I didn't. And uh, and that was one of the things, like, again, like, at the end of the exhibit that sort of um, was the culmination of all of the mistreat- mistreatment and being shut out that she had suffered from. Yeah, there was just, like, a lot of other stuff, like, um, you know, most ha- of the times the curators will give, like... Um, tours like I don't know exactly what uh the Guggenheim has but in at the AGO we have this thing called the curator's circle which is it's all it's like a membership but like you pay quite a bit more uh, to participate in like a private tour by the by the curator um and yeah it happens for every exhibit and the curator you know would take people who pay a quite a bit more money to support the museum on these tours and she didn't she wasn't asked to do that and yeah so it's just like I I mean in a way like you might think oh this person's just complaining about like you know she didn't get to do a tour or she didn't get to be there when they take down the paintings but it's like it's just weird because it's it's an industry standard like everyone does these things or just about everyone but then this person is like no yeah don't don't come and like that's just and and they don't really give an explanation like I have a feeling things probably started to sour towards the end of the exhibition you know because obviously she started to speak up about some of the problems she was having and maybe like I don't know somebody got pissed off and was like let's just tell her to go away and don't even let her back in to watch the exhibition get deinstalled so like again we don't know exactly what happened internally but um it does seem like towards the end, it was not a good situation. Yikes. Yeah, the sort of biggest public moment that happened until June of this year, which I'll put a pin in that for one sec. Um, but she actually publicly confronted them at the panel that she was not invited to speak at. Um, and of course, at the panel, like the people up there spoke extensively about her work and recognized the everything that she had done. And then I, I believe in the sort of the Q&A section, there's a video linked to the show notes um, of her confronting the management of the Guggenheim and the response from <laughs> the, and the president of the Guggenheim was there and responded to her. And the response was basically... We did recognize your work, and this panel was organized before your exhibit was organized, and sometimes curators are on these kinds of things, and we have recognized your work, and your work is good, thanks. It's such a weird response, and it like doesn't actually acknowledge the real problems that she was talking about in her speech. Um, there's also like a whole situation involved in the actual hiring of the first black staff curator at the Guggenheim that happened right at this time. Um, and I don't think we're going to get too far into that because like we do have runtime constraints on this podcast. Um, but like there's even more going on than we're even getting into. But just to like keep the focus kind of specifically on Shadria, this was the first time that she, that like she really got real attention uh, publicly with this whole situation. And probably since she was actually speaking out and fighting back against all of the racism that she had experienced. And so this did probably sour her relationship with the Guggenheim. Oh, sucks to suck Guggenheim. In addition to, yeah, to all these things and she did confront them and stuff like that um there was something that i also noticed when i was researching so um there though guggenheim did release like a response to her criticisms um 
and they basically yeah like again like you said they just said no like we we did appreciate her work we did properly credit her um she um you know her name was you know on the exhibition and they then they said um her she is credited as the author on the cover of her the exhibition catalog that she wrote but the problem is it's like yes on the cover it says the exhibition of the show and it says Shadria Le Bouvier but the um the rest of the title like when you look on I think the sleeve or maybe the back or especially when you're um, going on their online store in the catalog, it says uh, Basquiat's defacement, the untold story. It lists uh, Shadria first, but then it has Nancy Spector and th- three other, wait, four other people um, on as the author. And then it says with contributions by other people. So like the contributions is fine because obviously more other people wrote uh, essays in the book but she was the editor of the book she wrote most of the essays she wrote the exhibition catalog but Nancy Spector and other people were credited as the as co-authors uh, again I'm not saying that not like obviously more than one person can write a book and but according to Le Bouvier like it, essentially uh, I think it would have made more sense to say like contributions maybe by Nancy Spector and so and so um if they had written parts of the book or maybe I don't know if they wrote I didn't read this book so I should probably do that before I (laughs) specifically say like you know what it is but um but yeah like it's just weird they say yeah we credit you as the author but it's like no no you put me as co-authors with four other people when I wrote the vast majority if not like you know pretty much the whole catalogs Mm -hmm. and it's hard to say like in all of these examples that we've discussed and and reviewed and there are even more if you keep digging into her case and all of her experiences with the Guggenheim it's hard to say like were any of these conscious decisions on behalf of people like Nancy Spector to try to diminish her work? Um, were they exploiting the fact that she is a black woman um, and has traditionally held less power in the art world? Uh, were they trying to downplay their own racist past um, by downplaying the accomplishments of this woman? Or like perhaps maybe all of it was subconscious. Maybe it was just a lot of little things that kept adding up in ways that they thought it was okay to diminish her work because of broader situations that they were in or trying to protect their brand or even just um, subconscious racism that they didn't necessarily intend to do. All that being said, I'm not super interested in the idea of like ascribing intent to this situation. Um, I don't know what's in anyone's hearts here or what they intended to do. Please hear the air quotes. (laughs) But I'm looking at the outcome of what they did and the outcome of what they did was to severely diminish and try to uh, in many cases obscure the work of an incredibly dedicated and talented curator um, who not only did a tremendous achievement um, in reaching this position as the first black curator at the Guggenheim but also like by all counts put together an amazing exhibit about a very successful black artist like all of it's just like I can't (laughs) <laughs> the the absurdity <laughs> the absurdity of being like so the absurdity of diminishing the work of a black curator doing a Basquiat exhibit is just too <laughs> much like have you no shame <laughs> yeah and and I think obviously like working in any place or like especially when you're uh, you know um working with like leadership positions and directors and curators of uh, you know a quite internationally well-known um art gallery like you're gonna come across people with like a lot of ego I can see like a lot of people like you know conscious or subconscious racism or not like just wanting to put their own name like on whatever like a catalog or a show like they they everybody you know wants to be recognized um as successful or whatever and and there's plenty of examples of people like you know taking credit from all kinds of other people um just because they want to elevate themselves so like again you can see that you can see that maybe these other people were just like they just wanted to they just wanted like a, a success or career attention on them on themselves uh which is like fine if you legitimately like earned that success but not fine if you're like you know kind of trying to take credit for 
for things that other people did or like partially take credit you know whether this other person is a black person or not like that's I just think you shouldn't do that uh, to anybody um but yeah like I think especially when when it is you know somebody who has historic or a group of people who has historically been people who you would try to you know take credit from um and obscure their success like it it really does kind of make it worse Uh, even if you're just like trying to do that to anybody because you are full of yourself and again I'm not saying these people are I don't know them um I don't know if they did do that but I'm just saying it's possible to come across these people in life yeah yeah whatever kind of level of like conscious or subconscious things were going on here and I think it was probably a mix of both from various people at various times um but but just the the blatant ego involved on any level and then especially the diminishment of the work of this incredible black curator is shameful the reason that we're talking about this right now and the reason why this has become a little more widely known out sort of outside of New York art circles um, is because of a tweet that went semi-viral that Le Bouvier made on June 2nd of 2020. This is when the Guggenheim posted, the Guggenheim is observing Blackout Tuesday, listening and grieving with the family of George Floyd and the many other black lives that have been lost. Uh, Le Bouvier uh, quote tweeted this with, get the entire f- out of here. I am Shadria Le Bouvier, the first black curator in your 80-year history, and you refuse to acknowledge that while also allowing Nancy Spector to host a panel about my work without inviting me. Erase this sh- Please retweet. Um, right now, this has almost 40,000 retweets um, and 70,000 likes. She goes on to say, this is the same museum that made up an imaginary designation of first solo black curator because they were too afraid to admit they had not hired a black curator to lead a show in 80 years and erased me and history in the process. So the Guggenheim has responded to this, um, not in a way that's like truly substantial or really worth reading right now. This has gotten a lot more eyes on this, and this is how this came across my Twitter feed and led us into, like, researching all this stuff about Basquiat and Le Bouvier. And so I certainly hope uh, that changes are actually made at the Guggenheim. She's also tweeted in support of the workers and the union there um, and that there are, like, many great people doing great work there, but there are serious problems with the leadership and the way that they're treating curators and other people there. So... Uh, maybe there will be a revolution and we'll be able to reclaim the art museums for the people. But until that day, we're watching you, Guggenheim, and also all other white art museums. Um, yeah, no, I, I think you're, yeah, that's definitely um, why not only um, like Basquiat's work is still relevant and why um, Le Bouvier's work is still relevant today, uh, you know, despite this exhibition happening um, almost a year ago and then obviously Basquiat's work um, being produced like almost four decades ago and um, it, it is just it's very I think this is why it is just important to um, like you mentioned it, this is why art museums are important like this is why it's important to um, have these contextualized types of shows and um, like I definitely hope Le Bouvier like continues to um, curate shows um, I hope she has better experiences in the future with the people she works with um, and I certainly be interested in seeing another one of her shows um, somewhere uh, in the future yeah absolutely we'll definitely be keeping tabs on her work and when we can go outside again I will hopefully <laughs> be able to see her exhibits. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Pictorial. You can find our show notes at relay.fm slash pictorial. Um, and you can also find us on Twitter or Instagram at pictorial pod. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram at aspiring robot FM. And you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at articulations V. I'm also on YouTube at articulations. And speaking of YouTube, uh, we also upload these episodes to YouTube under pictorial podcast, YouTube channel, where uh, you can see pictures of uh, what we speak about during the podcast as you're watching or listening through the show um, in video form. Thanks for listening, art enthusiasts.